Hi, we're going to talk about stress recovery today. I've tried to film this video three times and each time I've been like, no, I'm going to start it again. The last time that I tried to film it, I was like, I get, get rid of this idea. Just throw it in the bin. I, I can't do this. I don't know. I can't get my thoughts together. I don't know what I want to say. All I know is I've got a whole lot of feelings, but I don't know how to turn those feelings into words. But then I had a comment from uh, one of my channel members and I was actually asking her what video she would like to see for the members only video since she was like my first Legends member. And she let me know, but on the end of the message, she tacked on non-beauty question how do you help yourself relax after stressful events? And when I read that, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this video. When I read that message, I was in the middle of my sort of stress recovery uh, process. And I decided that I was going to just continue to do what I was doing rather than try to sit down and film the video while I was still just not really feeling great about life in general. Here's the thing about stress, right? We all go through it and we all go through it for different reasons. For me, this has been an absolutely crazy, insane year. Hectic as fuck. And I feel like every time we sort of get over a hurdle, something else pops up. And I would say that this is probably been one of the most stressful years of my life. I've been through some pretty shitty stuff. As many of you will know, I was a carer for my mum, which I wouldn't say was shitty. It's shitty that my mum is not well, um, but I love my mum. I don't regret being a carer for my mum at all. Like absolutely 100% wanted to step up to the mark for that. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, the thing that is stressful about being a carer for someone is typically the part where you are watching someone you love dearly go through, you know, horrible health issues. By the way, mum's doing good. She's coming to visit me later this week. So, um, all is well on that front. That, that's fine. But that is one thing that I did for many years that was stressful. Uh, also my dad passed away from cancer again illness watching someone you love be ill these are horrible things very like horrible traumatic things muddled amongst that you have normal life stresses there are too many to mention so I'm not even gonna bother but I'm sure that many of you watching this video would be able to rattle 10 off the top of your head in just a few seconds this year has been interesting in the way that it stressed me out because I left my life, everything that I knew in Melbourne, in a city that I love, and it is one of my favorite cities in the world, um, to come and live with my partner in Perth. So it has been a very bittersweet experience for me because I do not regret moving here. I love my life with Chris. I look very much forward to our future together um, and yeah it's it's one of those things it's really hard to leave everything that you know all of your friends all of your family all of that support and stuff like the whole life that you'd set up for yourself um, in another state or you know for some of you maybe you've moved country so you know what that feels like um, to then come and start again. And I can see that the lighting is going to be an issue today because it's overcast. So this year has been particularly hard for me. And, um, I feel like for most of the year, I'm not going to lie. I felt like I'm drowning a little bit. And when I'm not drowning, I feel like I'm like just keeping my head above water. And I think I, or I feel like where I am now at this particular time that maybe things might start to calm down. <laughs> I don't know if I just jinxed myself, but I guess 
we will see. It's been one of those years for me where I have had to go through a thing. So initially it was moving myself and my dog from Melbourne to Perth and then to Geraldton. Uh, then we had to move from Geraldton back to Perth. Then we had to buy a house. Then we had to deal with the stresses of buying a house, which I haven't gone into it and I won't, but I can tell you right now, it was not smooth sailing. It was, I don't ever want to buy a house again. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. I am traumatized from that experience. I'm sure we would buy more property in the future, but that kind of gives you a vibe of like how the experience, like how is the left feeling after the experience. It was really stressful. Then there was the stress of getting this house set up. One of the things that I'm about to mention as being really stressful for me, I feel like a lot of you are going to roll your eyes, but I'm going to mention it anyway, because I think and this is the point that I really want to get across and maybe I'll try to remember to talk about it a little bit later in the video as well when I'm actually talking about my coping mechanisms for recovering from stress. All stress is valid. Whatever it is that's stressing you out, it's valid and um, you pr like you shouldn't feel guilty for being stressed out by it because sometimes it's not the actual thing itself that's stressing you out. Sometimes it's like other things that are sort of making that other thing really stressful um, but it doesn't matter it's still valid you're still feeling the stress and um, for me it was setting up that bloody filming room I hated it it's still not really done but it's kind of like it's enough for now and I'm taking a big break from it because I don't particularly like that room so it's been a big year for me and I have felt stressed for the majority of it <laughs> and look that's okay because it will pass like it's a season of life you I'll survive it it's fine but I have been feeling like I need to recover from stress a lot and that's what I really want to talk about in this video not coping with stress during the time of the stress I'm sure a lot of the things I'm going to talk about coming up now, you can totally implement them while you are feeling stressed. They will probably help. But this is my post stressful event recovery process. Step one for me is a hibernation day. This is essentially where I say no to everything. Um, I kind of clear my calendar. I do whatever I want to do on that day. A few days ago, I was like, nah, this is it. It's my hibernation day. Everyone, fuck off. I'm not doing anything for anyone. I'm not going anywhere. I don't care about any of the jobs around the house. I'm hibernating. I'm having a rest day. Now, a rest day can be what whatever you want it to be. It can be binge watching TV shows or movies. It can be self-care. I did my nails, I watched a movie on Netflix, Don't Worry Darling, not a bad movie, quite enjoyed it, and I played video games. That was it, that's all I did, and it felt good. Now, I think the thing that I really want to get across about a hibernation day or a rest day, I call it a hibernation day because one of my big rules is I tend to not go out because I don't feel like it. Um, and I try not to have any like external people from outside of the family unit come in. Like I won't even like respond to texts or anything. Like it's just, it's a no day. <laughs> if mum calls me or she sends me a message, like I will chat to her. Um, if, you know, Chris is home, like absolutely I want to be around him. He helps to recharge me. Um, and of course the dog, <laughs> how can, I, I want to be able to show you guys the dog, but she's not allowed on the couch. Like we've, we're trying to set some boundaries. Um, but yeah, it's, there's like certain people that do recharge me and they are allowed 
to be in my space on my hibernation days but for the most part so it's, it's just it's about me today it's not about you it's about doing things for me that I want to do and trying to just reset the brain I read a quote recently that I felt on a soul level <laughs> uh, in regards to like a rest day or a hibernation day and it went something like shaming yourself or feeling guilty about resting is not going to result in rest. So for me, having a day where it's just about doing what I want to do and it's not about, you know, catering to anyone else's needs or, you know, doing housework or anything like that. It's just a day where I'm treating myself to what I feel like I want to do, doing my nails, watching a movie, playing video games, whatever it is, whatever your hobbies are. Hell, maybe you like to go hiking and you're like, I want to turn off my phone and go on a hike, or I want to spend my day in the garden, or I want to do jigsaw puzzles all day, or I want to read books, whatever it is. It's all valid. Whatever it is that is going to help you rest and recharge, do it. Give yourself a day to do it. You're entitled to it. And don't feel guilty about it. Don't beat yourself up about doing that. I actually watched a TikTok recently as well where two people were conversing and they were talking about like taking time for themselves. And I think one of the women must have been a mother. Maybe they both were. I don't know. I don't know who they are. It was on my For You page. You, you get it. Like it's, it's random. And one of the women was talking about how she'd gone out and got her hair done, her nails done, and all that stuff. And the other woman was like, do you feel guilty about like taking a day away from your family to like do things like getting your hair done and getting your nails done? And the other woman responded and said, no, I feel guilty for being a to my family because I don't take time for myself. And I think that is really really valid when it comes to like recovery stress recovery or giving yourself time and space to just be yourself sometimes it's really important to put yourself first okay moving on from hibernation day the next thing that i like to do is tidy up i like to clean up my space um, I try to keep the house kind of clean. <sighs> we live in it. So obviously, you know, I mean, anyone who's ever lived in a house and doesn't strive for like an Instagram perfect um, influencer style house, you'll know. Houses get messy and that's okay. Um, but I definitely find that when my house is an absolute pigsty, so is my mind. Um, I can't. Mm. I can't like the two correlate messy house messy mind clean house clean mind it is what it is now I don't go overboard with the cleaning because I think like if you've just had a rest day or if you've just gone through a stressful event and you're feeling a bit <laughs> fucked up from that and then you've had a rest day the last thing you're gonna want to do is actually then go full force into deep cleaning your house I'm not talking about that I'm talking about identifying areas where things are a little bit chaotic or a bit messy and taking the time to just tidy them up. For me, it was the kitchen and bathroom this time. Kitchen's always a mess, like always. You tidy the kitchen, you make one meal, messy. There's dishes, stuff gets put on the bench tops and it's like a dumping ground, like you get it. It's a kitchen, it's fine. It's always gonna need tidying up. I tidied up the kitchen, got that done, felt great. And then I did the bathroom. Bathroom, really not a big deal. It's more about like putting stuff away, wiping down a bench. I'm pretty sure it took me longer to wipe down the benches in my bathroom than it did to like put everything away and just not make it as, you know, messy on the bench tops. I will say I am very lucky when Chris is here, 
he is great with the helping of the tidying up and the cleaning up so it doesn't it's not just on me um, but when he's away it is just on me because then it's just my mess um, and I think it's very easy for me to like if I'm kind of feeling a bit like blah or whatever I've had like shit going on or I've currently got stuff going on that's sort of stressing me out or overwhelming me uh, I find it pretty easy to be like okay I'm just going to dump this thing in the general area that it goes. I'm not going to like put it away properly. And that is definitely one of my worst habits uh, and something I'd like to work on. I think um, quite often I do myself an injustice by like putting something on the kitchen bench that belongs in the kitchen. I'm just not putting it away properly when literally three more seconds of my life could put it away properly and then it doesn't make it an issue for future Haley. so that's on me that's that's my own you know my own bad habit next thing i want to talk about and this can totally like carry on from you know cleaning up or tidying up an area in your house productivity I think when we, and actually this also goes back to my first point of a hibernation day, I think when we're stressed and we're putting things off, uh, we do tend to feel really guilty about like not getting jobs done, you know? And I think if we can just find a little bit of productivity in each day, that can help you to feel like you are still achieving small goals. I would definitely say hibernation day shouldn't be about productivity. It should be about rest. Even if I've had a hibernation day and I'm sort of trying to get back into the swing of things, but I feel like I need more hibernation, I still try to do something productive. Whether that will be a little bit of work, again, maybe tidying the house or I might declutter something, I might organize something. I think as adults, we are heavily manipulated into believing that we need to be productive 100% of the time. And I think that's a really toxic way to look at life. Genuinely believe that that can cause not only stress, but anxiety and other mental health issues and I think for me at least what has been great for me is not thinking that anymore not feeling like I have to always be productive all the time sometimes being semi-productive can be enough to you know keep on top of things and get things done and not feel guilty about you know taking it easy in life and it can also still give you that sense of achievement it's okay to have a bit more of a relaxed day especially if you've just been through something that's really stressed you out or it's been a traumatic experience or whatever you're currently going through it's okay to just like chill just chill and do a little bit. At the end of the day, the world is going to go on anyway. It's not going on without you. You're just going at a slower pace. And that's totally okay. This is really important. Like really, really, really important. But I think it's probably the... <laughs> for me at least. It won't be for everyone some of you will be like yeah this would be me on my hibernation day um, and I did sort of touch on this um, exercise exercise get outside touch dirt get some vitamin D just go the fuck outside and if you can't go outside but you still want to exercise you can go to a gym you could go to a swimming pool and swim you could even put on a video on uh, YouTube and do a, a little workout, but get get the heart pumping, get the blood circulating, work up a sweat, do some exercise. I would actually say that if you are 
going through a stressful event currently, like struggling with something, this is something that you should probably try to implement even when you're currently going through it and you're not just in recovery phase. Even if it's just like a five minute walk around the block, if that's all you can manage, fine, like whatever. But being outside, absorbing some vitamin D and getting a little bit of exercise is so, so good for you. And I think it is probably one of the harder things to do because when you are stressed and you're not someone who already really, really loves working out, like it's not one of your hobbies, um, it's generally one of the last things that you want to do. And the thought of even doing it is just like, no, like, I don't want to do that. Um, you were just saying, do what makes you happy. Mm, I know, but exercise is one of those things where you, you don't want to do it. And while you're doing it, you're usually not really enjoying it. But once it's done, like your body feels different. I used to run and I hated it. <laughs> I did. I hated it. I hated the whole experience of doing it, right? I used to have to wear like um, an underwire bra with a sports bra. I had all of my running equipment, like, you know, the special clothing. So it's like sweat wicking and all that stuff. And I used to hate it. In the summer, it was so hot. In the winter, it was so bloody cold and so hard to like get out there and get started. And while I was doing it, I was like, this is so annoying and I hate it and I want to go home. But once I'd done it and I got home, I felt like a completely different person. Completely different. Like my mental state was on a high. My body felt really good. If I overdid it the next day, I'd be a bit sore, but it's fine. Like it is what it is. You know, that's sort of a sign of your body is it's getting stronger. Um, I stopped running, uh, d again, mostly because I just found it so hard to get out and start doing it. And I actually started ballet and I love ballet and I miss it so much. I stopped going to ballet last year um, when things started to get kind of crazy and I was, you know, like going to Perth or Chris was coming to visit or had like, <laughs> it was just like, I didn't have time for all of the life things and the ballet. Um, so I stopped going and when we decided that I was going to move to Perth, I was like, okay, it's fine. When I move, um, like I'll take my ballet bar, which I have here, uh, and I'll find a um, a class that I can do in Perth. Well, I, I, I should have known that it would take us absolutely months and months and months to even get from moving to Melbourne to buying a house and settling in, but it didn't really occur to me because I'm an idiot. Um, but it's only just now where I'm like, okay, now I have time to go back to ballet classes and it's been almost a year. Uh, <laughs> and I started looking at ballet schools nearby. Looks like there's only one and they only do one class a week. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is actually doing online classes with my old school back in Melbourne. Now, I haven't started doing that because I can't afford it. <laughs> the cost of living is so high. But really, that's also just an excuse. Like I said, I do have my ballet bar here. I can look up some like guided classes on YouTube. But I think what I enjoy about actually going to a class is the fact that you are shown how to improve. You're shown how to do it properly. Um, so eventually, I do want to get back into that. I might just have to travel a bit further. Um, but for now, I just walked the dog and um, I will do some, do some via the YouTubes on the big TV. All right, last thing I wanna talk about would be 
having a support network. I think it's really important. Your support network can be like anyone. It can be a single person. It could be your dog if you want. Like, who cares? It's it's just someone that sort of gets it and isn't there to like judge you about taking time for yourself and prioritizing your own mental survival, essentially. For me in Melbourne, it was mum and she was great. Like I could just say to mum, we're, we're having a rest day and she'd be like, yay. Um, but also she had the ability to recognize when I was a bit like just burnt out from whatever, life, work, anything. Um, and you know, chucking a load of laundry into the washing machine for me or making me a snack or asking if I wanted a coffee or, you know, whatever. It's little things like that. Um, and I will say, I'm, I'm so blessed. I swear to God, when I look at Chris, I, it actually makes me believe in some sort of higher power, call it God, call it whatever you want. But I feel like someone up there literally made that man for me because he is amazing. He's an absolute, ugh, just, he's perfect for me. He is very good at recognizing when, um, for lack of a better word, fucked. Uh, <laughs> when I'm like, just over it when I'm done. He's not judgmental about it. He doesn't, you know, give me a hard time. Um, he does very sweet things like he will cook dinner. He will clean the house. Like it, having somebody who gets it and who can sort of, you know, just be there to help whether it be pick up the pieces or even not just do that, just not judge you for taking time for yourself. Like that, that is a support network. That's what you want. If you're going to have people in your space while you are recovering from a stressful event, they need to be like that. And if they're not, you need to throw them in the bin or at least put them outside to air until you're ready to deal with them. Having somebody be supportive doesn't have to look like someone you know cleaning the house or making you meals or anything like that like usually after a stressful event you can still do those things for yourself you just might need a little bit of time it's more about like just respecting that we all experience crap and the way that you feel feel after experiencing something stressful is valid. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Now that I've said all of that, I, I don't feel like any of it is genuinely going to be helpful, but I guess now you know my process of recovering from stress, but I am gonna put it up because I actually managed to film the whole thing this time. <laughs> Every other time I just get a few minutes in and then I'd be like, what am I even saying? Uh, so I'm, I'm ticking that sense of achievement box today. Feel free to let me know what you do uh, for stress recovery, or if you have any coping mechanisms during stressful times. I didn't touch on that because honestly, I don't think I do. My thought process when I'm actually going through a stressful experience is this too shall pass. Um, it won't last forever. Just survive. Don't kill anyone. <laughs> Don't go to jail. Just get through it and then you will be able to process it and, you know, get back to a normal life. I wouldn't say that I have any really good stress coping mechanisms it's all post-stress recovery for me um i just yeah kind of get on with it and do what needs to be done and then cry about it later <laughs> so leave your comments down below if you feel like it i would like to say thank you very much rachel for encouraging me to come back to this video idea and just doing it 
um, I'm actually glad that I have now and uh, thank you to all of my channel members uh, I'll be back with another video soon although I look usually try and do like three videos a week it's not been the year for it I can tell you that much for free um, but I do have mum coming to visit so ugh, let's just see how I go although working while mum is here is much much easier because she gets it she gets she gets it also the lighting the lighting i'm going i'm going because the lighting is stressing me out <sighs> thank you guys so much for joining me today um like i said i will catch you in the next one bye